What is up you nerds? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to use data for project management, which as a topic, you know I love because data penetrates just everything these days. So let's talk about a couple different ways that I do this as a program manager now, a project manager before, and with the skills that I acquired when I used to be a data analyst. The first way that I do this is prioritization, whether that's between projects or project tasks. This just means that in order for me to understand what is most important, I need to know two things. What are we measuring these projects or project tasks against? And what metrics do I have about these projects and the project tasks? In order for me to thoroughly prioritize with every project and every project task, I should be able to gather information and data on those metrics. So it's looking at what you're trying to deliver with the project what is the expected impact and how does that compare between projects or project tasks. Being able to prioritize efficiently is such an important skill whether you're working in project management or program management because you're essentially trying to deliver something for the organization whether it's a deliverable from the project as a project manager or improvements towards a strategic direction as a program manager as I'm currently doing. Data as such then is absolutely essential in setting expectations for the projects and the project tasks as well as figuring out what's the correct order in which they need to be executed in order to drive maximum impact at the right time. I do want to also mention in, in combination with prioritization another way that data is being used in project management that has to do with prioritization but it's very specifically to resourcing. So as an example I've had to provide work estimates and data data on what the workload for a project and the different project tasks is in the future so that I can guarantee that I will have headcount or resources to actually execute against those project tasks. And without data, without being able to put numbers behind those asks for resources, it's really hard to justify for actually getting any. Because of that, gathering data from your previous project tasks or projects also gives you leverage because you have proof, you have precedent, you have examples of how many many resources a project task or a project will take to complete in the timeline and in the scope that you want to do it. And that is also something that comes into play a lot, time, scope and resources, which we call the project management triple constraints. So usually you need to play around with the three, figuring out if you have limited resources, then you need to think about whether you can have a longer timeline or a smaller scope. So scope would be everything that's included in that project. So if scope becomes larger, then again, time and resources are what you can negotiate with. So either more time or more resources in order to do the work in the same timeline. Obviously then resources, so either money, budget, people that you can use in that project are your third option to negotiate if time and scope are more rigid than the budget. So those are what you can play with but generally knowing your numbers and knowing which metrics to track for each of your projects or project tasks is super important and that is how you make sure that you are delivering the most important work first. The second way that I use data for project management that I want to talk about is stakeholder management and influencing stakeholders. Without numbers and without concrete evidence of how your project will impact the business and your stakeholders metrics is really hard to get their buy-in. Data is so important in showcasing what is the potential for your projects and what impact you're driving with your project already. In order to convince your stakeholders to buy into it, to maybe invest their time or their team's time in your project, you are going to have to actually show them some kind of an impact to numbers that they care about in order for them to be able to justify that. It kind of goes back to that resourcing bit a little bit, but whether that's at the beginning of your project or at the end of your project where you need to wow your stakeholders, you need those numbers and you need that data to back it up. So in order for you to do that, you have to track data throughout your entire project. Which brings me to my third point, which is project reporting and success metrics. In order for you to really get the credit and really hit home with the point of your project being a success throughout the project, you do need to have those data points on how you were able to deliver against the resources, against the timeline, and against the scope of your project. We often do things like postmortems after a project in order to learn more about what we could have done better or what went really well, and also how the expected outcomes and the actual outcomes compare to each other. In tracking 
using these metrics, you're also able to better report during your project, which is also super important because communicating your milestones and communicating progress is a super huge part of project management work. And if you don't have those numbers, if you don't have that data, it's really hard to actually be able to share where you are with the project. So project reporting and success metrics are super important in order for you to get credit for your successes. And finally, I want to talk about data being used to choose a project approach in order to pick the right way to solve the problem that the project is targeting. So you may have a completely fine business case for your project, but you still need to figure out what's the right approach and order of doing things for your project and what kinds of things or risks might impact that. So data about each one of the approaches that you're considering is going to help you decide what's best for your organization. So you might be doing a cost benefit analysis to figure out which of the options is maybe the most cost effective in using resources and what kinds of benefits that might yield. Other approaches might be very cost inefficient and very expensive, but they might yield better results. And the approach is really determined by both the triple constraints that you have on your project, but also what is the expected and wanted impact from the project. Sometimes you don't need to have maximum impact. Sometimes it is just to get to a good enough result. So you don't have to optimize for the outcome. You might just need to find out what's the cheapest way to get to a good enough result. There may be also things like risk considerations that you might need to think about or will definitely need to think about at the beginning of your project but in choosing the approach making sure that the risk that you're taking is appropriate to what the organization is expecting. Data again is hugely important in this in order to also quantify the cost, quantify the benefits, quantify the risks in order to properly analyze them and not just trust your gut because you might have business knowledge but it still might not cover the situations that you end up in. So your gut feeling isn't always correct and supplementing it with actual data is a really good thing and for project managers it's essential. Those were a few ways that I use data as a project manager and now a program manager. There are probably more, many more ways that I do that that I didn't remember to <laughs> include here. I tried to think of everything but if you do project management in your work and you use data in that and I didn't mention what you're doing with data, please leave a comment because on this channel sharing is caring. I'm not trying to say that. My answer is the all-encompassing one answer and one size fits all. Like I want you to share what you know as well so that we can all learn together. And that is all for today. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content on data, project management, productivity, and working in tech, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, the thumbs up button is right underneath this video. Do hit it please so that more people can find this because the algorithm really likes those likes. And without further blabbering on, I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.